Hello everybody, how are we doing? First things first, look what Secret Santa got me. Look, cooking with Coops, branded apron. You like? It's nice, yes? Okay, so today I'm going to do risotto and also through January, February, just winter warmers that are really like comforting and easy to do. Thing is with risotto is it takes a while and then people can't be asked, sorry, can't be bothered uh, to do it. So let's see if we can make that a little bit uh, easier, make the approach to it a little bit easier. Right, first of all, get the oven on at about 180 degrees. Mine is, second of all, this one is gonna be, we'll go through the ingredients. It's gonna be a butternut squash yeah, and sage with some pancetta, okay? If you're vegetarian, don't do the pancetta. It's easy, it goes on last, last minute. So you need risotto rice, onions or shallots. I'm going with shallots. Uh, stock cube. Yeah. Butternut squash, I've already practiced. Full disclosure, I did this for dinner last night. Uh, some fresh sage, none of that dried floor sweat nonsense. Uh, and some celery uh, and some garlic. Okay, so first things first, Get your oven up to 180 degrees. Take a, this is just basic prosciutto, parma ham, serrano ham, any, and I'm just gonna, you know you see it in all the, um, in all the most of the restaurants, they have like nice garnishes, and some of them are crisps. I'm gonna show you how to make those crisps. So take a baking tray, whatever size you like, and some greaseproof paper. We're gonna lay it out onto there. This is a bit thin, so it will, it will go really quick. It'll probably take about, sorry, I'm off camera. Take about 10 minutes. I'm just going to do one actually. Okay, and you lay it as flat as possible. Now, if you're doing it for more than one person, put more ham down. But for now, like that, like that, 180 degrees, and in the oven. Right? Simple as. I'll put a timer on for 10 minutes and hopefully it won't be burnt to cinders. If it is, push your toes too thin and I need to get palm ham instead. Okay. That is done. Next, we are gonna need a pan for the risotto. Now, you can use a frying pan, a deep one. I'm gonna use a regular saucepan. I'm sure most of you have got these at home and stick it on the heat. But before we do all that, we're gonna to have to chop some bits up. Okay, so we're going to start with the shallots. Nice and easy. One or two. This recipe is gonna do for about two people. Um, top and tail your shallot. Obviously, again, you scalp the root, remember? Just take the, the little hairy bit off because you need that to keep the shallot in its place, okay? I might do two of these, actually, they're quite small. Down the middle, so it's nice and flat. Remember, we talked about this, flat boards, you need a flat surface so it doesn't rock around. Pretty simple stuff. Most of cooking is relatively simple and common sense. It's the being on your feet for hours on, on end and getting shouted at, that's the hard part. Most of it's common sense if you can think it through because you've got time to think it through at home. Right, and we're gonna just finely dice this, which is lengthways, vertically, then horizontally, and then pin it all together. It'll all come out nice and finely diced. And then we talked about this again, cooking times has to be the same size, otherwise the big bits take longer to cook than the small bits. So again, you wanna watch Lengthways from the root, not touching the root. You're going to stop about about two mil away from the root. Long stretches on the shallot. These are banana shallots. You can get regular shallots, but they're so fiddly. And you've got, if you look there for fine dice, the gap between it is minimal. It's like two millimeters. And then one should suffice, one horizontal slice, and then we come vertical again. And you've got, I could do the show you off thing and look at the camera the whole time think. And the thing is with shallots, they're finer, they're less pungent than, um, than uh, onions. They've got a sweeter kind of finish to them. So you want an onion, you want it in something like that's going to be cooked for a long time, like a chilli or a bolognese. Um, because, oh, the risotto does cook for a long time, but it's just got that more, it's, it's strong, onions are stronger, okay? Shallots are just a little bit gentler on the palate. Okay, so we've got our shallots. That is one. Next thing we're going to need is some celery. Uh, one stick will do that. Take the end off, make sure you wash it, because it will be grubby. Take the end off, top and tail. Throw that into your little bin. I'm just gonna give this a quick rinse, because I've just seen some mud at the bottom. Right, and to make it more manageable, we're gonna dice this the same size as the shallot. Make it more manageable, cut it in half so it's not as long, and just do some strips like this. 
as quickly or as slow as you like with a knife that you're comfortable with. I'm gonna get onto knives and a cheeky little rant about bits and pieces. I'm gonna put on a rant section in my, on my Facebook page that will probably have a few expletives in it, so don't open it in front of the kids. Um, but yeah, there are some bits and pieces over Christmas and over my time in the kitchen, I'm sure many other chefs in the kitchen wish they had just gone to town on customers, staff members, potentially. Um, things that just, just grind our gears, man. Um, and one of which is looking after your knives. Um, also chopping boards. You can oil these wooden boards, you know, just so they'll last longer and don't split. All of that's gonna be in a, another little section, I think. But for today, let's just crack on with this, but not with nut squash and sage risotto, prep some things, the parma ham, prosciutto is in the oven, crisping up, and weird ice in this. To be fair, I've done this in the wrong order, because what I should have done was get this in the oven. Right, but nut squash, nice and simple, lovely piece of uh, vegetable. I don't need the seeds, so you can take those out, just like you do a pumpkin, it's part of the same family, and just scrape around the edges and take the seeds out. When I got away, I'll just do that over by the sink. Do excuse me. La, 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 la. La, la, la. Talk amongst yourselves. Brilliant. Okay. And to make this easier, you've got this hollow bit here and you've got the solid bit at the top. Go down the middle, half. This is where it's a little bit tricky. Stand it flat. Again, flat edges. I think you're getting me drift. And you'll see the flesh and the skin are separated by like a white line. Can you see that? Yeah? Well, we don't want the white bit, we want the orange bit. So go around the side with your blade. It doesn't have to be as quick, it has to be safe. But and remove that hard skin, okay? Into the, uh, what we've sort of talked about in one of the other classes. In most kitchens, we have a, an old Tupperware or something similar called a ship bin. Um, and that will be made sure, it could be anything, it could be a jug, it could be an old Tupperware, just, you put all your scrapings in there before you put them in the, the compost or the bin, whatever you've got in your kitchen. Just keeps the sides clean and free of any kind of mess so you can see what you're doing. And you're not getting in anyone's way because in the professional kitchens, there'll always be someone jostling for space. You'll have a little kitchen and all the rest of it. Right, that is, Celery, shallots, and now we're gonna do the butternut squash. Now I should have put this, like I said, about a centimetre thick, just go long. Should have put this in first, because it takes about 20 minutes. And while, we're, while that, this is cooking, we should have could dice the, uh, the other veg. So I've done that in the wrong order, but hey-ho, that's a nice freeze to get. Take a tray, lay it out on the tray. Now you can do this with a bowl, just chuck it in a bowl with some olive oil and whatever you need and um, season it. I'm going to do salt, pepper, chill up a little bit of heat, so there's going to be some chilli flakes in there. Okay, so there's our butternut squash. Here's our olive oil. Yeah, give that a rub. Coats it lovely. So it just covers it all and make sure that your salt, pepper, seasoning, whatever you're using, just wash my hands. Uh, whatever you're using sticks to the butternut squash. Simple, really. There you go. Pepper. Salt. Chili flakes. Oh, hello. Oh, God, that's going to be warm. And in the oven. Okay, last thing to chop, finely chopped, that goes in together is my favourite ingredient. Garlic, amazing. Thanks for sticking with me. What's it all about? 10 minutes, we're not even cooking any rice yet. Okay, we'll do this super quick. Just one clove, take the skin off. We'll take a little break while I get everything else ready. Absolute shambles, Cooper. What's wrong with you? Again, nice and fine dice. You can, of course, crush that, grate it, however you like, but I, like I was in the cutting mood. Right, come back to you in two secs. 
Okay, welcome back. Quick recap. Squash and pancetta are still in the oven, cooking through, and we're just going to about start our risotto. Okay, so you will need some butter. I always go for unsalted. Most people do because you can add salt later on. Can't take it out. So um, if you're doing pastry and it's a sweet thing like a brownie, unsalted butter. Same goes for well, everything now. Just get unsalted butter. It's out of habit. Um, into the pan. Nice knob of butter and onto the heat. We're going to wait for that to melt and get up to temperature and then we're going to add our shallots, celery and garlic. I'm going to put that on a lowish heat, we don't, want any, we don't want to mark it, we don't want to scorch it, so we're going to get that up to temperature, turn it down, add this and we're going to fry that for about five minutes okay, until it softens and gone a bit translucent. Then we're going to add um, the risotto rice, again cook it on a low heat so it goes translucent. You can hear the butter like melting now, amazing. We'll cook that on low heat and then we're going to add uh, some wine, let the uh, alcohol evaporate off and, and the rice absorb that and then we're going to uh, just cook it out. But you don't want to see me cooking stirring risotto for half an hour so we'll cut straight to the end after that but I'll explain as we go. Um, so yeah, risotto, the reason people don't do it, it's not hard, it's just a ball ache. You've got to stay by the stove cooking it, I've it for said before. Thank you, Sarah from Northern Ireland, for my lovely secret Santa. Not so secret now, she told me she did it. Um, <laughs> present. Right, let's get this in there. So, shallots, turn that down. Shallots, celery, and garlic, all in at the same time. No messing. And if you think that you can't chop shallots and everything that fine, where are we? There we go. Um, just practice. If you watch any of the videos in this page, it's all about the practice. I've said it a million times, um, all the top chefs, starting when they're 15, 16, 17 years old, whenever it was, uh, practice Practice makes them the best. Putting in the hours and practicing. Uh, can you imagine Raymond Blanc, he's 70, I'm sure he still has to practice some bits and pieces. Or remind his genius head um, of what he was doing. So, um, may I offer a bit of advice? Wooden spoons are fantastic, don't get me wrong. But if you're shopping for new stuff, Get one of these silicon spatula they come in smaller ones which i should have that's from a, an old job um, and they're brilliant for getting around the corners of pans because they've got this little bendy tip they should be for pastry and cakes and and all that malarkey but they are heat proof for their silicon and that was too big that's why i'm not using it or, or you all call me a hypocrite turn that down to its lowest setting and make sure it doesn't mark. Right, I'm going to put in some risotto rice. Now, where did I put the risotto rice? Anyone? There we go. Okay, um, so this recipe, half a bite of squash, about 200 grams of risotto rice. Now, I'm sure you all know this, but I'll say it anyway. I put the jug onto the scales and then I press the zero button, or the on button, and that will zero off the scales. Okay, 200 grams. Beautiful. Turn your kettle on. And that is going to be about 700, but do a litre, 700 ml or do a litre for a stock cube. This one's vegetable, but you can use chicken if you're not going for it. If you put pancetta in it, chicken might add a bit more flavour to it. Completely up to you. Stir your celery, garlic, and shallot, or onion. How you're going with it. Now we turn it up a little bit. We're just waiting now, we're waiting for things to cook. Um, so 200 grams of risotto rice. They're nearly, they're nearly soft and lovely. Rice goes in, you coat the rice in the butter um, so it's got nice and starts to absorb some of that flavour. There's our pancetta, like a true pro. Um, and then we add the wine and the rice absorbs the wine and then we add the stock and that's where we start adding a bit at a time, stirring it in and the rice absorb everything during which the squash in the oven is still cooking and that comes off, you can just chop it up a little bit, add it to the rice, stir it in, put the lid on it, add the parmesan and your butter last minute, beautiful creamy result. Okay, let's see if our little bacon crisp is playing along. Excuse this risotto, it might be, it might not, you never know. 
Darling. Yeah. Nearly there. Basically, the top, putting that on top stops it curling up. And we, oh, it's getting, tell you what. Well, a few more minutes, and we've got our nice little garnish, our little bacon crisp. Um, while we're waiting for that to soften up, yeah, all right, so we can get to our sage part, and that's to pick the leaves, okay? Fresh sage, wherever you can, wherever you are in the world, <laughs> please go fresh. And if you can, go to your a local independent supplier. Um, and it's not ideal, it's not always uh, doable, is it? I mean, I use supermarket Morrison's is around the corner, but if you're shopping and you've got the budget, and you live nearby, please just support local businesses. I really, really appreciate that. Right, so we've got a few leaves of sage. What's going to happen is once the um, butternut squash that's gone in the oven has had about 25 minutes, we're going to take it out and put that on top. Uh, and then we're gonna, uh, and then put it another five minutes because if you've ever eaten raw sage, you shouldn't eat raw sage. So you give it that time to roast it alongside with the, the um, butternut squash. Our uh, celery, shallot, and garlic is about a minute away. We can add the, end, add the rice, and means our pancetta crisp will be done, and we're all coming along nicely. So um, why risotto? A because I got asked to do it by a client. And um, it is a ball ache if you got, haven't got time. This is something that's quite, well, if you've got the time, basically. A lot of my clients just want to know how to do things. Um, but the majority of them are like, I need it done fast. I've got kids, I've got work, I've got something to do at the weekend. I need something quick, quick, quick. So, but this isn't for that. This is completely uh, nice and slow and relaxed. Drink a glass of wine, talk to your friends around the kitchen and all that jazz. Okay, so. Let's get our 200 grams of risotto rice in there. Make that sure that's okay. And then with the jug, bang in. I'm going to go for about eight, 750 to mil to one litre. One stock cube. It says on the packet 500. I mean, in an ideal world, you'd have your own stock, wouldn't you? But we don't, so no, I'm going to the shop board stuff. In she goes, nice and easy. And then just whisk that in. Break it up with a whisk. Make sure she's ready to go. And with the risotto, you just add this gradually, let the rice absorb it, and then add and gradually cook it until you're ready. You've tasted your rice and it's lost that bite, okay? You don't want any of that. Right, rice in. It will, if you don't watch your pan or you've got it on too hot, it will start to fry the rice, and you don't want that. You don't want any colour, basically. You just want a nice low heat, gently warming through and cooking. Cooking. The rice. So you want to make sure that any flavour that's come out of the celery, the onions and the garlic and the butter have coated the rice. So you've got a nice little flavour jacket on the rice. If you think you need to add more, by all means, but I'm, I'm good there. I'll turn the heat up a little bit for adding the wine, just a glass of white. Uh, you can use vermouth. That's about a glass. That will go down somewhere else for cooking. Or I might just saunt it. Turn up the heat to bring it up to a simmer, and that's the first start of getting the flavour in. Um, all the alcohol, all the alcohol will um, evaporate out. Um, if you want to take it well, look, look at that. You can not only hang them up, but you can keep your spoon out of the, uh, the pan by using the hole on the handle. Cool, right. Now, all I'm going to do after that is add the stock gradually, and um, yeah, you don't want to have to watch that. So we'll start with the stock. I'll show you how to gradually add it. I might even bring it to the board and then I'll uh, we'll tune in for the finale and plating up, all right? Lovely jubbly. Right, come on. While this is coming up and the wine is being absorbed by the rice, it gives me a chance to tell you what I'm all about, I guess. Uh, so, I started cooking with Coops to educate people and it's more about home cooking than anything else. Um, I've spent 25 years since I, since I was 15, you can do the maths, um, cooking in kitchens here, there and everywhere. It's been fantastic, um, but uh, inspired by my mother actually, uh, she gets a recipe book for Christmas and then looks, opens the pages, looks at it and there's a million ingredients and then the methods are too hard from the celebrity chefs you see on the chat. I'm not digging them, they've done much better than I ever would have and good luck to them. But when 
you've got 20 years of uh, cooking experience under your belt and you write down the methods and the ingredients that you need for a dish and you present it to a 70 year old housewife or, or, or mum or grandma, they're going to look at it, be intimidated and not, look, and not bother. I, I think I speak for the majority in that respect. Uh, so I've decided to simplify everything, try and make it really easy for you guys by the way of social media. Um, but I do do it in person as well. Um, that's basically it in a nutshell. The reason for doing everything was um, from my mum getting confused or intimidated by um, the cookbook she got given, probably by me, having too many ingredients and not understanding the methods. Um, because you have to read from a page and look at the picture that the professional chef's kind of done for you and he, their, their food looks absolutely outstanding. It's taking them 45 minutes, it's taking you an hour and a half. It's just demoralizing so I thought this would be a nice way of getting everyone up to speed and then when if you if you sign up blue button up there become a client um, then you'll get like one-to-ones and we'll talk and you can ask the questions that you want to ask and I'll teach you the techniques that you're not uh, too strong on or, or don't know anything about at all and we'll cook together it's really nice actually um, got a lovely lady um, Isabel Izzy um, from Washington DC in the States who I'm going to talk to just after this actually uh, and we're going to go one to one we're going to make some basics and we're going to figure out what she wants, how she wants to progress over 28 days so she's an absolute cunnery whiz so if you look at this it's like you can see the individual grains just all the, uh, the wines evaporated up and we're just going to add literally it's about a ladle full at a time but that much and stir it in and then wait for the rice to absorb it all and go again and even I don't want you to have to don't want you to have to watch me doing that so I'll come back and do the last little bits okay Tara god Rosario takes a long time right thanks for sticking with me this is going to be a long video it's a half an hour I reckon in total uh, but hey ho that's Rosario for you even with the cut in and coming back in so um, the oven just beat I'm going to show you now what the butternut squash like and the pancetta we took out earlier but I'll show you from the oven do you remember we've got a very crispy non-foldy crisp now you can use that as garnish I'm going to crush it and crumble it over the top of the risotto last minute so that's one part done Next part out of the oven is, with five minutes to go, the butternut squash. Now we're going to take these leaves that I've picked, just going to lay, lay them on top. We're going to chop all this up anyway, but the sage and the butternut squash can get to know each other. And also, like I said, raw sage leaves are an absolute, well, they taste grim. It's not like basil. You can eat basil fairly raw, can't you? So let's get those lovely sage leaves on there. Maybe another little drizzle of olive oil, just to give them a little bit of emphasis. Da, 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 da. And then back in the oven for five, ten minutes, okay? Just to get that sage leaf cooked off. 180 degrees. And we'll take out, and when it's cooled down a little bit, we'll chop up that butternut squash. Risotto's still going. You can see it's starting to take form. It's quite creamy. It still needs a bit more stock. So, last part coming up in a bit. Bye. Okay, final part. Thanks for sticking with me. The risotto is nearly there. Lovely and creamy, but we're going to make it even creamier later on. And that's due to the rice more than anything else at this stage, but after that. Okay, out of the oven, we've got our butternut squash. It's still warm. You can see where the sage cooked. Take your best two looking leaves and put them to one side if you want a little cheeky garnish. Those two. And the rest, we'll just take off the tray onto the board and we're just going to chop it up, it's still warm, <laughs> chop it up and you can either have it in bits or you can smush it into the rice, it's completely up to you. Um, I'm going to take this off so it doesn't catch, she's nearly there, this is all taking part and this is the grand finale, so take up your bits of your squash, I'm just going to cut them as you see fit, how you want them to appear in your risotto, you can have them fine and smash them in, so you've got a... Uh, like an orangey risotto or you can have nice big fat chunks i'm just going to do it as quickly and as easy as possible so you haven't got massive wedges <laughs> running through your rice okay and we're going to transfer that scoot to wash my hands i'm going to add that see how lush that's 
really nice. You can see the celery in all the bits and pieces. I'm just gonna stir that in for about a minute. So you have to bear with me. Meanwhile, we'll grate our parmesan and our butter just to finish it off and make it extra, extra creamy. Wash hands, wash knife. Okay, fold that in. Like I said, you could be brutal with this. You can smash it to pieces. So you've got, um, so the butter, butternut squash breaks up even more, or you can leave it so you can see the actual sage brown up through it. But we'll return that to the heat just for a minute. Meanwhile, you remember the goo cheesecakes and all those jars that you got left over from Christmas or you kept in your garage? Well, that's about how much parmesan you're going to need. It's about 50 grams. I've got this great grater. <laughs> I've just realised what I said there. This great grater from my mum. It comes apart to fold into the drawer. I'm going to get it back together now. And you've got big holes, you've got small holes, and we want it to melt quick. So we're just going to grate the parmesan. I appreciate, I've just done that with the squash, but it's the same thing. I appreciate either way it is, so I'm all right with it. <laughs> But yeah, I should wipe my board first. There we go. That much parmesan and a knob of butter. Save some for the topping if you wish and garnish, but we've got the pancetta as well. Wrap me sink, pan me knife at the sink, which is clean. Another knob of butter on top. Just so it doesn't hit the side. We've got our squash rice risotto in there. And now we have parmesan and butter right at the end. I'm going to mix that in. The butter's going to melt. It's going to make it nice and creamy. Once the parmesan and the butter's mixed in and you see that lump of butter has melted, you can just about, it's just nearly gone, it's nearly gone. Once you got to that stage, you've got that lovely cheesiness. The butter's going to make it nice and creamy. Put a lid on, take it off the heat, stick a lid on it. Clean down this, oh my god, me garnish, me garnish. Clean down the surfaces and get ready to plate up. Now, the oven was on, put your bowl in the oven. This is off now, but like your mum, mum or whoever does Sunday lunch should do when it comes to the end of the roasting. Warm your plates up, don't you? So that bowl's gone in the oven for a minute, just that same minute while the risotto absorbs all that butter and parmesan. And then we'll dish up and we'll crunch our little prosciutto crumb on top, or we could do it like well, we'll see. see how, the nature takes, how it takes us. Give that a minute and we're golden. Right, a bit of a long distorted one this, um, but it gives me another chance to February. Um, I'm gonna do three course dinner for your loved one for, for Valentine's Day. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to sign up and we'll do, and it will be completely 100% bespoke to what you want to do. If you don't like mushrooms, there's no mushrooms. If you don't like, if you're allergic to something, it won't go in the meal. If you don't like olives, anything like that, I guarantee the majority of people will do doing prawns, lobster, steak, and a dessert that's not too uh, heavy so you can have some romance at the end of the evening. But if you want to get involved and you want me to help you uh, plan a three course dinner for your loved one to eat in, so you don't have to faff with restaurant bookings and you don't have to go into town and worry about taxi charges and who's driving. You just cook at home, put him or her on the couch, let them do what they want, and you cook a slap, slap up meal, a bottle of fizz. We can do some wine pairings as well. That's coming in February. I know, we'll put that on the website. Well, soon, now, in fact, it's on the website. Go for it, I'll do it after I post this. Okay, got the cloth. Got my bowl. I can't feel it under the weather. The whole house is sick, so apologies for that. Right. Bowl. Risotto. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You can smell the parmesan and see where it's stuck. Oh, mate. No airs, no graces. Nice bowl of risotto with butternut squash and sage and if this is a restaurant we'd probably do a little shard of uh, what was that what was that parmigiano or some parmigiano I'm just gonna crush it you got shards 
<laughs> and a little sage garnish. Bless it for what it's worth. And that is my butternut squash. Can you see that? And risotto, uh, butternut squash, sage risotto. Which I'd bon appetito, guys. Sorry that took so long. Thanks for sticking with it if you got this far. <laughs> see you soon. Bye.